We just brought you Jeff Brown's story, a former member of the U.S. military who was deported to Jamaica. Now to get an in-depth view on what more can be done for U.S. Army veterans who are banished from the country. Joining us for some perspective, attorney at law, the Shagan Law Group in the United States, Craig Shagan. Welcome, Mr. Shagan. Glad to be here. Talk to us about how it is that a U.S. military personnel can actually be deported from the United States to anywhere else in the world. You would think that it's only U.S. citizens that can serve in the U.S. military. The United States has not only conscripted and allowed citizens to serve in its military, but also those who intend to be citizens. And in modern day terms, that would include uh, lawful permanent residents or green card holders. And while they're in military uniform, while they're in the United States military, they are treated for all purposes as American nationals, meaning that if they were captured, they would be an American who was captured. However, uh, Congress, for whatever reason, neglected to provide that those who, uh, who serve the country uh, keep their nationality status once they take their uniform off. What are you doing about it? Are you trying at all to engage the U.S. government about this trend? We have, very much so. Because in 1996, Congress passed a law that not only uh, made the grounds for deportation much, uh, uh, much broader, it also eliminated the discretion that judges could exercise to overcome those grounds. And so now, if somebody is convicted of certain classes of crimes, for instance, uh, they are automatically deported without discretion. What have you noticed in your own clients in terms of the effects of the military experience on them? Well, that's the part that's really upsetting because I can tell you one of the first clients I had was a Vietnam veteran who uh, was a very, uh, I, I would describe him as somewhat down and out. So he, for instance, was an alcoholic. He had a uh, lots of addiction issues, and was often homeless. Now, uh, I don't know whether his military service rendered him that way, or something else did, or whether it was completely irrelevant. But what we do know is that military service is very hard on the psyche as well as the body of a human being. And a number of our uh, veterans uh, have been wounded or uh, have suffered the kind of uh, mental trauma that goes with combat. These other deported veterans are completely giving up, not by choice, but nevertheless, they're not getting those benefits? Well, that's, that's the, the very interesting thing. They're, they're, they're legally entitled to all of their benefits that uh, notwithstanding, like, let's say they sell marijuana later on or they commit a, another type of crime that gets them deported. Well, uh, they are... Uh, entitled to all their, their veterans' benefits, nonetheless, so long as they were honorably separated from service. However, as a practical matter, they can't enjoy those benefits because they don't have the one benefit that really matters, the ability to stay in the United States. We did a story on a Jamaican national, served in the U.S. military, was deported to Jamaica. He's here now. What can Caribbean governments do to tackle this issue to get more traction? Well, I think they could they could protest the return of these citizens and say that, you know, once they've served in your military, they're yours. And indeed, in many countries, including the United States, service in a foreign country's military is often a crime. And I don't know for the particular uh, uh, Caribbean country, but if that's the position they take, I think they should make it known to the United States that this is not appropriate. Craig Shagan, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. That's Craig Shagan of the Shagan Law Group, joining us from Harrisburg in Pennsylvania. Coming up on 18 Degrees North, Haitians in North Miami. They've come a long way since the initial wave of boat refugees in the early 1980s. But even with more and more prominence in Miami, one statistic remains disturbingly high, the number of Haitian juveniles in Florida's correctional system. After the break, we meet one of these former inmates trying to turn his life around. That's next on 18 Degrees North. The preceding segment was brought to you by Caribbean Dreams.